Hello chess friends and welcome to Azaro's chess channel and welcome to my basics in chess series. So we are continuing with this middle game planning, middle game strategies, uh, with this uh, recognition of common pawn structures and we are continuing also with this so-called Moroxy bind. It's this uh, setup with this c4 and e4 pawns. We did already many many ideas uh, in this setup for white today. We will uh, continue with this c5 and e5 possibilities uh, in the Moroxy bind uh, which is really really also an important strategy uh, idea which with which you have to be familiar because uh, you see black's defense is basically uh, firmed around this mm, d6 pawn and if we have the possibility to create a pawn breakthrough with c5 or e5 uh, you should realize and use this possibility in order to open the position creating some attacking possibilities in the middle game and let's see now a couple of examples uh, how this c5 and mm, e5 uh, possibility work uh, in the middle game while playing the Moroxy bind as white. Um, here I have already set up a position. It, uh, it's really a common position in, in the Moroxy bind setups, uh, although uh, of course many many moves were played so far but uh, here you see uh, we have the possibility to create this c5 and e5 pawn breakthrough uh, that's all possible because uh, we have a very very nice uh, rook connection here on the c and d file and uh, this knight uh, is, is a little bit vulnerable to our attacks so here we should uh, use this flexibility uh, with this bone structure here on b4 and c4 and create a bone breakthrough in order to crack here this d6 defense and here uh, the best move is to move c5 um, so you see if d takes c5 uh, then of course we have now uh, e5 and now knight on g4 uh, can uh, has to be played uh, f3 and now bishop takes on g4 bishop on e2 after a trade of bishops the continuation would be maybe here e6 but uh, white will continue the game with one piece up and have of course uh, completely winning endgame so here let's now see again this move c5 uh, you see if black doesn't react uh, then we can simply capture uh, the spawn uh, on d6 and then after that with the queen so again uh, white will uh, white will continue the game with uh, with some material uh here also then followed with uh, when we capture this d6 pawn then of course we can uh, follow with uh, e5 and f4 and really support and creating sort of a pawn chain here which will be unstoppable in a, in a potential end game for black so one of the continuation can be maybe uh, here to play the move bishop on d4 uh, in order to um, uh, to uh, to start the c5 e5 pawn breakthroughs and uh, the instructive game that i wanted to show you it was played by uh, dimitri anderkin uh, andrekin uh, against uh, mika kartonen and here after bishop on d4 a knight on h5 was played now uh, bishop takes on g7 knight takes on g7 but now you see again this e5 possibilities because we have created a very nice battery uh, on the d file and now um, the, this bishop on d7 is really vulnerable to our text uh, bishop on uh, e6 was played but now e takes d6 now we finally took this pawn on uh, d6 uh, e takes d6 now knight on e4 we have a uh, queen on e7 but now knight on d6 uh, with the fork on the rooks rook on d8 and now c5 you see uh, when uh, while we have uh, really um, cracked this position around d6 now it's possible to push the pawn here on c5 and really fix the position here and fix this knight uh, on this very important uh, d6 square on the sixth rank so you see this knight has really occupied now the position has infiltrated in, in black's camp and here uh, it's basically a lost position for for black uh, let's go a little bit back further uh, you see uh, while playing again uh, with this Moroxy bind again I'm pointing out that uh, black has only his uh, pieces at pawns on the sixth rank so you see um, black didn't gain space at all so you see this Moroxy bind setup it really kicks away some uh, sometimes um, 
your opponent's pawns, uh, pieces and uh, creates this really really nice position in, uh, positions in middle game. So let's see now uh, another example. Here is a game uh, played by Jan Krzysztof Duda against uh, Jan Adamski. And uh, here we have the so-called Maroxi bind in the Khan formation. Uh, Khan Sicilian was played and um, here White has these uh, troubles uh, uh, to d defend here this c4 pawn. That's why Rook on uh, was played by Black. But here Jan Krzysztof Duda, one of the most talented players now these days, a really, really st strong Polish player. And he finds a really nice idea here. He plays this f4 uh, move immediately. Uh, knight takes on c4 was played, bishop takes on c4, rook takes on c4. And now we are creating uh, this e5 pawn breakthrough. Uh, black has to react. So here knight on g8 was played and now f5. Very strong move because we want to open some files because black hasn't castled so far. And we have an endangered king in the center. So here d5, um, black desperately tr is trying here to close the position in the center uh, f takes e6 was played bishop takes on e6 knight on e6 f takes e6 but now queen on h5 g6 has to be played uh, and now queen on f3 now the threat is of course queen on f7 with the checkmate that's why queen on uh, e7 but now very strong move again by Jan Krzysztof Duda uh, bishop on g5 uh, if the queen moves of course we will first uh, capture the bishop here on uh, f8 so that's why queen on g7 was played but uh, this is really really uh, now too passive here for black uh, we have knight on d5 really really strong play here knight sacrifice uh, e takes d5 and now um, queen on d5 attacking the rook uh, queen on c7 but now queen on e6 with the check bishop on uh, e7 uh, queen on f7 uh, we have here uh, king on d7, but now the other rooks uh, uh, comes here uh, in very effectively in, in the game. Uh, if the king moves, of course, here on uh, c6, then we can simply capture this uh, rook on c4. That's why uh, here king on c8, but now a queen on e8, and this position black resigned because if you cover here with the bishop, then of course we can simply uh, take with the rook and uh, checkmate black so very very strong move uh, this after c4 we have here after rook on c8 we have now this f4 possibility you see we have e4 uh, and f4 that's why here we have the possibility to create this pawn breakthrough again with the e5 in this moroxy bind setups you should be really uh, careful sometimes because while playing this f4 you you could maybe uh, have a vulnerable bishop here on e3 with knight on g4 ideas but that was not possible in this position position of course because we have here uh, queen on d1 and uh, bishop on e2 which are covering this important g4 square twice and uh, this uh, f4 idea in, in in the opening uh, was i think a very very strong move by by the talented uh, young Christoph dude so let's see now another example it was a really great game uh, played by christian Köpke against uh, lawrence maximilian drapke here uh, again we have a con uh, formation of the Sicilian and uh, white has again the so-called Maroxi bind again we have c4 uh, and e4 here this is creating a really nice um, control in the center of course and now white finds this very nice move knight on d5 if uh, e takes d5 then we simply recapture with the pawn e takes d5 and uh, create the discover check on the queen king and take out the bishop so that's why bishop on e7 knight takes on e7 king takes on e7 and now f4 again with the preparation to push the pawn here on e5 um, this is all possible because we get rid of this uh, dark for bishop and uh, okay white black can try maybe a check but then of course king on h1 and we have solved all problems uh, we don't have any more an endangered king but this e5 possibility is always uh, present here in the middle game uh, this e5 will really kick away this uh, knight which is the main defender now of the king because the king is a little bit awkward here on the square on e7 so that's why uh, black tries here 
h5 uh, in order to simplify the, pos the position trade off the queens but here white finds this very nice move e5 anyway because uh, if you uh, take out the queen then of course we can play simply uh, uh, e takes f6 with a check first and then recapture the queen and uh, this is of course a completely winning winning endgame for white so uh, i hope you realize this idea so this f4 e5 idea or maybe uh, b4 c5 idea uh, in this so-called maroxy bind you should really realize it sometimes in the middle game because while playing the maroxy bind you have created uh, really this space advantage in the center uh, black if if it's, if black is uh, really pushed out here only on the sixth rank you should do uh, you should watch for your pawn breakthroughs you should try uh, to find them in the middle game and kick away your opponent's knights maybe which are the main defenders maybe creating some discovered attacks so like we saw in the first example on the d and e file so many many f uh, possibilities we have while playing this uh, maroxy bind and uh, we'll continue now this maroxy bind from black's perspective like uh, this knight outpost on c5 uh, blockade systems and similar ideas because uh, while playing as black and as this white you should be also familiar with your opponent's ideas and uh, in order to keep your keep your ideas working in the milk okay i hope you enjoyed this video meanwhile you can watch my other basics in chess series with some other uh, recognition of pawn structure middle game strategies and opening principles uh, end game strategies and similar stuff and you can also watch my chess tactics and chess puzzles uh, if you want to be familiar with all of the possible tactical motifs that can happen in a chess game thank you for watching guys and chess is the best of course